Okay. And so we're now on to the next discussion item. And which one? Calpia? Calpia Facilities Maintenance BCP. Um, the issue before the subcommittee is the CDCR's proposal to enter into a statewide janitorial contract with the Calpia Janitorial Services Enterprise to comply with mandates in the Plata versus Brown case. CDCR, um, LAO, Department of Finance, and Public Comment App. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Joyce Hayhoe. I am the Director of Legislation for California Correctional Healthcare Services. Our Cal PIA proposal would provide permanent funding for each of our institutions where we will be partnering with Cal PIA to create an inmate vocational program whereby we will be um, keeping our facility health care operations in a cleanly standard um, according to Title II, Title 22 standards. Um, right now we have about 14 institutions where we have no dedicated staff for health care cleaning and as you may know our expert reports definitely pointed out the need for some sort of um, permanent programs that would provide us with clean facilities. So what we did is we partnered with Cal PIA. We put together a vocational program. Cal PIA will have um, a thousand inmate slots during the year, which will increase the capacity for programming under Cal PIA by 17%. Also under this proposal, the inmates will be getting a certificate of completion that they'll be able to use when they go out um, after they parole to get a job. Um, this, um, uh, janitorial, um, uh, this janitorial program is something that is lacking in the general public and it's, it's, a, it's a good program for the inmates. Um, they're also gonna be uh, able to earn program credits which will help to reduce the population through population reduction. So we're very excited about this program and we ask for your support. Thank you. Uh, LAO first. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Larson with the Legislative Analyst Office. We just had a, a couple of concerns with this proposal. We do think that there should be a statewide standard for cleaning the health care facilities, which there currently isn't, and that should probably include a higher level of training um, and oversight than what currently occurs. We also agree that using Cal PIA is a good way to provide these services because there's a recidivism reduction benefit in the training, um, as well as the increased credit earnings that inmates can get uh, to get released slightly faster. Um, however, we would note that three quarters of the cost of this proposal is for civil service employees to provide oversight, training, and audit services. So for example, um, upon full implementation, there would be 170 permanent civil service custodial staff um, assigned to this project. Uh, based on those concerns, we would recommend that the legislature withhold action on this proposal um, and have the receiver report um, on the number and type of civil service staff that are assigned to the project and discuss alternative options, um, such as using Cal PIA but having fewer permanent civil service staff, um, because currently we're just unclear about why there's such a large budget for the civil service staff. Okay. Thank you. Department of Finance. Tabitha Stout, Department of Finance. We would just like to say that the price per square foot comparison between this and a private hospital isn't really appropriate because a private hospital is set up mainly as an autonomous building, whereas these mental, these healthcare facilities are often spread out over the institution and require multiple security checkpoints to get through, which extends the amount of time that the employees are needed to be on site for cleaning. And um, if we use the Cal PIA staffing plan, but um, factor in state civil service positions, the cost would jump to about $2.60 per square foot for the um, janitorial services. Okay. Um, did you want to 
respond to any of that? Um, yeah, sure. Um, the reason for the addition, the uh, costs is, like I said, um, many of our facilities have no staff at all that are assigned to do uh, cleanliness in our healthcare operations. And so that's the reason for the staff. The staff are going to be responsible for training the inmates, but also supervising the inmates, because we can't have the inmates in the prison without supervision while they do the job. So uh, this proposal also is supported by SEIU. And um, as Department of Finance said, it's a good way to partner with the program because if you did all civil service staff versus civil service staff and inmate staff, this would greatly increase the cost. So we think this is a great, a great deal for the state. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any comments from uh, – uh, let me just, just quickly add this. Um, and you're probably getting tired of this, but in a previous life, as director of real estate for the city, I had custodial staff. And I know what it takes to clean the difference between a police station, um, a fire station, um, a office building, and uh, and we had we had our own we like to call it a holding facility because we didn't like the word jail, um, and it required different levels of custodial or janitorial services, and so that the we would get the same kind of concerns from the from the council offices. Why does it cost so much more? in this facility versus that. And when you start to drill down and really just, or even just walked in their shoes, I don't want to use a term that the union uses all the time, but once you walked in their shoes and saw what they did and you realize, um, for example, in a police station, it's 24-7. So as opposed to being in an office building where it's 9 to 5, so that automatically increased your participation and with the workload three times. Um, and a lot of times people just didn't, because you're not working with it, you didn't understand what that what that what that took. But and the other thing is um, management. Um, even if you had all civil service employees, you do need um, supervision and management. Um, and and I would s surmise on this, what we're trying to do and try to implement is not only ensuring that you have the proper um, supervision, but you also training at the same time. Exactly. And so that's going to double your effort um, to what you want to, what you want to do. And ultimately, um, besides the greater good, I mean, the thing um, that I think maybe the, even the LAO should look at is that when you break it down to dollar per square foot and you, you really drill down to that level and, and compare apples to apples, you'll, you'll start to see that, um, that not only there's some savings by using um, prison industry um, individuals, um, but there'll be some other savings that don't show up on this, on this ledger. Um, that will show up outside of prison long after, um, long after they hopefully have left the institution. And so, with that, I um, um, obviously the chair is would love to have a motion to to adopt the proposal. Joan Sawyer, aye. Melendez, Rodriguez, aye. Stone, aye. motion passes four zero. Here it's out. Thank you. So. Our next proposal oh, is... Wait, the second piece. The, the great assembly member from Ms. Melendez would like to vote on a previous item on the budget. She wants to go on record. Go ahead. Oh. We can go through it all. Just so for you. For uh, vote only issue number one, judicial branch capital outlay reappropriations. Aye. Melendez, aye. Motion passes 4-0. Vote only issue number two. Uh, sex Offender Management Board Spring Finance Letters. Aye. aye. Melinda's aye. Uh, motion passes 4 0. Vote only issue number three uh, the parole revocation and compliance workload. Aye. Melinda's aye. P motion passes 4 0. Vote only issue number four enhanced CDCR litigation BCP. Aye. aye. Melinda's uh, motion passes 4 0. Yeah, and that action or the motion was to reject. Yeah. All right. Um, vote only issue number five: uh, funding to support SB two hundred and sixty. No. No. Motion. Uh, Melinda has no motion. Passes three one. Item to be heard: issue number one: CHP Air Fleet replacement. Aye. aye. Melinda is aye. Motion passes four zero. Judicial Branch um, 
Los Angeles County Mental Health Courthouse Project. Aye. Aye. Melinda, or Melinda's aye. Motion passes 4 0. Alameda County, New East End, New East County Hall of Justice. Aye. Melinda's aye. Motion passes 4 0. Judicial Branch funding, uh, augmentation of 262.1 million. Emphatically aye. <laughs> emphatically aye. <laughs> Motion passes emphatically 4 0. <laughs> Um, and that's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're, you're welcome. Um, you may begin issue number two. Thank you. Um, the next issue is the baseline adjustment to our pharmaceutical program. And in the interest of brevity, um, the LAO is proposing a two-year extension rather than a permanent funding uh, for mm -hmm. our pharmaceuticals, and we're fine with that. Okay. Um, pharmaceutical costs are really volatile. You have new drugs come on the market that are expensive, but then as they go generic, those drugs uh, drop in cost. So um, looking at the costs uh, every couple years n isn't necessarily a bad thing. We would also um, be happy to do the report to the legislature mm -hmm. that the LAO is uh, asking for. I like that. Okay. Uh, I guess the LAO doesn't have to say anything now, but go ahead. Yeah, we, we don't have any additional comments on, on this proposal. Okay, thank you. Okay, and any um, comments from members? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, actually, we should have asked for public comment on the last one and this one. And I'm going so fast. Um, so it totally, this is totally $168.4 million. Correct. And I would also like to add that that's actually a decrease from 2010-11 uh, when we were spending roughly $210, $216 million. So we've actually brought the cost down, but we believe that there might be some more efficiencies. Yeah, but, but it's still a lot of aspirin. Yes. <laughs> we have a lot of sick people in prison, unfortunately. So um, uh, I need a motion to adopt a proposal on a two-year limited term basis as recommended by the LAO. You got one. <laughs> Joan Sawyer? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Stone? Aye. Motion passes 3-0. Okay. Item issue number three, medical classification staffing model BCP. Yes. So this proposal is actually an outgrowth of uh, inmate realignment that we undertook. Uh, what the proposal does is it decreases our staffing by 148 positions. But what we've done is we've created a model now whereby we will look at our inmate staffing based on the acuity of the inmate, the medical acuity of the inmate. When realignment took place, what we found is that it got rid of the uh, younger and therefore much healthier population, it left with a, with a population that was older and sicker. So if we had reduced staff just on a person by person basis, we would have um, reduced too many staff. Going forward now, we'll be able to adjust our staff on a yearly or twice yearly basis based on the acuity of the inmate at the prisons. Good. Are there any questions from staff? I mean, from uh... Any of the members? Any public comment? Oh, LAO? I'm sorry. Yeah, just uh, one quick comment, which is that uh, we had recommended that the department report uh, on the changes in the staffing model in budget hearings, okay. um, which th they haven't done yet. And Department of Finance? Do you want to comment? We, we did uh, provide our report to the legislature uh, early this year after the proposal was approved by the Department of Finance. We didn't get it to you. Uh, so there was a paper report provided, the analysis that was the basis for the mm -hmm. staffing model, um, but there was no uh, report at any hearings on, on this issue. Oh. Okay. I understand. Um, we're going to move ahead with this anyway. Okay. Uh, need a motion to adopt a proposal. Joan Sawyer? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Stone? Aye. Motion passes 3 0. And I did ask if there were any comments, so, but no one got up, so. And 
the last one, Armstrong Compliance BCP and Spring Finance Letter, and it's in two parts. Um, add 42 full-time permanent positions and $4 million in order to assist in complying with the Armstrong Remedial Plan and Requirements of the Americans with Disability Act. And part two, grant a one-time augmentation of $17.5 million from the general fund to begin construction of ADA improvements at four prisons and begin the design phase for improvements at 15 additional institutions. CDCR? Yes. Uh, yes, Joyce Hayhoe with the uh, California Correctional Health Care Services. So we are requesting 42 full-time uh, positions that we will use in our institutions primarily to make sure that the 24,000 class members under Armstrong receive services and that we monitor the services that are provided. Again, this is very important because we're under court mandate to provide these services. Right now we have $7.6 million, $7 million encounters for medical services on a year, which comes down to 500 encounters at each prison every day. So the staff is necessary to be on the ground so that we can ensure that people with disabilities, both learning disabilities and physical disabilities, are receiving the appropriate uh, interventions that they need in prison and that we are monitoring that intervention so that um, when people come to audit, it shows that we're in compliance. And that's a really important part of what we're doing in terms of doing this program on a permanent basis. Because even if we were to meet the requirements of the Armstrong Court and the lawsuit goes away, of course the services for the disabled wouldn't go away. We believe it's really important to have that monitoring in place so that we don't get back into the area of needing to get sued again. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Dean Borg representing the Facilities Division for CDCR. Uh, I'm here to discuss the uh, Part B that you mentioned. Uh, we have been working with stakeholders to identify what is the subset of the prison system that should be modified in order to provide disabled accessibility for inmates. Uh, and uh, we worked to do that and then uh, started to design the modifications that are necessary. The request in front of you uh, is to uh, for $17.5 million to start the construction, as you mentioned, at four prisons. And and to do the rest of the design work in an additional 15. Uh, this work is necessary to ensure that we have the right types of housing and programs and services available to inmates that may be in a wheelchair or walker or cane or any other uh, disabled accessibility issues our inmate population may have. Thank you. Uh, LAO? Yeah, we just had a couple of comments on these proposals. Thank you. Sure. Um, so with the with regards to the first Armstrong proposal, um, we did have some concerns about the number of permanent staff that are included as part of the proposal. So much of the compliance workload is associated with failures to comply, training um, staff on appropriate methodologies if they're identified as, as not adhering to the remedial plan um, and implementing corrective act action plans at the institutions. Um, but once full compliance is achieved, which the receiver has indicated will be in this fiscal year, um, it's, we believe that the workload would be decreased um, compared to where it is currently. Uh, we'd like to point out that CDCR currently has 67 uh, of these kinds of staff, uh, uh, roughly one compliance worker for every 755 employees. Uh, the receiver's ratio under this proposal would be one for every 250 employees, uh, which is much higher. And finally, given that institutions currently have different levels of compliance and, and workload associated with compliance, um, it seems unlikely to us that each institution would require the same number of positions. So we're recommending that for this proposal, the legislature approve the two sign language interpreters that are part of the proposal. And those were just oversights in the um, staffing plans for CHCF and DeWitt Nelson. Um, and they exist at every other institution. We would also recommend approving 14 one-year limited term positions for Armstrong compliance for the receiver. That would give the receiver the same ratio of staff to compliance staff that CDCR currently has. Um, and then we would ask that the legislature require the receiver to report once um, those limited term positions are about to expire um, on the Armstrong workload and performance metrics that are associated with their work and how those will change um, as compliance uh, improves. 
Uh, with regard to the spring finance letter, we did uh, raise a couple of concerns with the proposal as originally submitted. Um, it didn't have the sorts of information normal, that's normally included as part of a capital outlay proposal um, because the administration submitted it as a maintenance rather than capital outlay request. We discussed our concerns with CDCR and with the Department of Finance, um, and they provided us with the additional information that's generally included in those capital outlay requests. Based on that information, we don't have objections to the substance of the proposal, um, but we would recommend that future proposals of this nature be run through the capital outlay process. Okay. Thank you, Department of Finance. Hi, Tabitha Stout, Department of Finance. On the Armstrong proposal, we would like just to reiterate what the receiver's office said. Due to the quantity and complexity of these um, documents that have to be reviewed, that's um, justifying the number of positions that are required. And um, they did not receive any positions prior to this. That um, CDCR's positions were not related to the medical review at all. Mm -hmm. For the Armstrong spring finance letter, we would just like to note that proposals, projects related to the Americans with Disabilities Act are budgeted as support for all state agencies. That includes um, parks and any other agencies that have an Americans with Disability Act project. It's because the type of projects are really repair projects in nature. So this request wouldn't really fit in within the capital outlay because the improvements wouldn't result in the construction of new buildings or change the use of the facility. Did you want to comment? Um, yeah, I just want to make one comment in terms of uh, the relationship between um, our proposal to the CDCR staff is that we actually have a 336% uh, greater workload than CDCR, and that's why the ratios are different, because our workload is different. Okay. Any questions? Oh, you, you can say anything you wanted here. Clint Pell, Department open. of Finance. And just, uh, just to maintain compliance and the assumption that once you receive a level of compliance that all of a sudden this workload goes away is not, is not act in actuality. There's a lot of investigative workload that goes on tracking the ongoing compliance. So you may improve in one area and then over time find out another area becomes deficient. So that's why it makes sense to continue these on an ongoing basis to make sure that we are um, able to, you know, attract, um, track deficiencies and anything that we need to handle. And keep us out of court. Exactly. Okay. okay. With that, are there any questions from committee members? Any comment from the public? Okay. So we're, we're going to go ahead and ask for an approval and adopt the proposals. Um, there a second? Yep. Joan Sawyer? Aye. Rodriguez, Aye. Stone, Aye. motion passes 3-0. I believe that is it, and um, it's been a full day. Um, pretty expensive day, but it's been a full day. Um, uh, and, and I may just want to just just leave with what? Oh, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna leave the roll open for Miss Melendez, um, and never, she's not okay. Um, she's not. She's not coming back. Um, and so uh, it's. It's actually it's been a very full day. And I just want the Department of Finance and LA know, uh, LAO know that we did listen to you. We heard you. Um, we're, we're taking in all of your comments, and we're going to make sure that um, we're able to do things. Obviously, using some of the examples that you you've recommended, that we we, we incorporate as much of it as possible. Um, in addition. Um, uh, I know there was a lot of discussion about the letter, and I just wanted to go on for the record. Our number um, is based on what um, we believe um, the legislature is working on, but we also believe that there are other members within this building working on additional funding to offset some other uh, financial problems that are that, that need to be addressed, and they're earnest, earnestly working on it. Hopefully, May or June, we can do that. And, and I specifically, I'm talking about there's a difference between what we approved today and the 366 that was in the letter. And th that's because uh, I think we have people who are, 
who are actively know that it is a problem for the courts, and I know it's different from here, but we're working on that too. So thank you, and thank you for everyone for, for being here. And that, we stand adjourned. Thank you.